guys, there's actually a 21st proteinogenic amino acid in humans, selenocysteine. No, I didn't lie to you before because selenocysteine isn't a common amino acid, but it is an important one. It is the selenium analog of cysteine, which is the sulfur analog of serine. We're getting bigger and bigger in atoms, and so selenium is kind of the best of these at participating in reversible redox reactions, which makes it great for antioxidant defense, serving important roles in antioxidant proteins such as glutathione peroxidase and thyroidoxin reductase. Today I want to tell you about how that selenocysteine actually gets into proteins, because if you look at a codon table, you're not really going to find it. That's because it takes over one of the stop codons, UGA. If we think about messenger RNA, we've got the strand of mRNA. In the beginning, we've got this 5' prime UTR, which is the untranslated region. It doesn't have the amino acid instructions, it just has some regulatory information. Then we have the actual translated region, and here the different amino acids to be added are specified based on three-letter RNA sequences called codons that tell tRNAs to come in and bring the corresponding amino acid. And these tRNAs have an anticodon, which is a three-letter sequence that's complementary to the codon in these sites. And then at the end, you've got this 3' UTR, which has additional regulatory information. To get to the 3' UTR, you actually have a stop codon, which tells the ribosome, okay, stop putting in amino acids. What happens there is instead of a tRNA coming, a release factor comes, which is a protein, which kind of mimics the tRNA, but instead of bringing in amino acid, it basically cuts off the growing chain and voila, the protein gets released. In the case of selenocysteine, you want to take over that stop codon and instead have the selenocysteine tRNA come in and bring the selenocysteine to incorporate. The way that it's able to do this is by taking advantage of a couple things. Ribosome actually kind of pauses when it gets to that stop codon. Selenocysteine has this kind of loopy part in its 3' UTR called the selenocysteine insertion element or cesis, and it is going to bind to a tRNA that has selenocysteine incorporated into it as well as a special elongation factor and stuff. And so it's gonna hold it nearby. And then when the ribosome gets to that stop codon and it pauses, the tRNA for the selenocysteine is just gonna like sneak in there and incorporate the selenocysteine into the protein before that release factor can actually get there. In order to actually get to that selenocysteine latched onto that tRNA, you first load the tRNA with serine and then swap out the oxygen of serine with the selenium. And that selenium is typically coming from being cleaved off of a protein called selenoprotein P or cell P, which has 10 different selenocysteine residues that can be removed as needed in order to make fresh selenocysteine tRNA that can then get incorporated into proteins.